Controversial surrounding the new appointments of two new ministers into cabinet continues, but it is all legal, says government of the day. Leader for the opposition, Honorable Tung Yesioni Hollow, said the new appointments are not legal and not within the constitution, and they call on government of the day to review the new posts. He said measures could be taken if the government of the day does not operate within the constitution. However, Honorable Premier Talangi said it is all legal tender and changes were previously made to accommodate the new appointments. The Attorney General's office today confirmed that the Civil List Act was amended in 2009, which was drafted, in, or drafted by Professor Tony Angelo. In Section 11 of the Civil List Act 2009, it states that the Premier can appoint any member to assist a minister. This year's budget was presented to, to Parliament last week by the Government of the Day. And Honourable Premier Toketa Langi is confident the budget will go through in its final reading in a few weeks' time. Although concerns from the opposition was previously strong, they feel the Government of the Day will draft and present the budget as it sees fit. However, they said the budget is not different to previous years and it should be different with more incentives for the people. Honorable Tokita Langi said there are provisions in the budget to address the needs of people. The, the budget is there to provide stability and confidence in people in their lives here, in their pay, in what we do with the infrastructure to make sure that it, everything operates and runs. That's a major, major issue. In the past, we've never been able to retain some of those um, things. We all get frustrated because we're not maintaining our, um, our assets and so on. There's a million dollars put in the air, agreement between ourselves and New Zealand to provide for that. So to suggest to me, in fact, that there is nothing when, in fact, that in itself is confidence in our ability to provide financial resources to enable us to maintain the core infrastructure we have so that people here will continue to enjoy good power, good water, and think. We sometimes seem to become blasé about those things, you know, become, feel that they are standard things anyway, when in fact we forget that not too long ago our, our pays were reduced by 10%. 2006, that's what happened. 2008, the then Financial Secretary suggested to me that in fact we cut our pay by 10% because we had a cash flow problem. So stability in that respect is extremely important to us, and it's extremely important for me to show people that's what we've done. With respect to the other parts of the budget, I've already said the maintenance, uh, there's a million dollars put aside for maintenance and so on, in agreement between ourselves and New Zealand. And there's a substantial amount of money that we're also trying to get, some we've already obtained with New Zealand uh, funds for tourism, to try to help develop the economy of this country. Now, if they don't see that those funds are, in fact, important for us to build a sustainable economy, then clearly they don't understand what budgets are about. Are you confident that um, this budget will go through? Yes, I'm pretty confident. Um, I've always been... I mean, Caucus is, is, is happy with it. I've explained what we're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. Everybody in New Way, as, as you point out, are, are quite sick of us being seen as being dependent this budget gives us an opportunity to invest, to look at, in the future, paying for ourselves in the long term. Uh, you have a look at the, the trust fund. You know, there's almost $50 million in there now. We'd like to build it up to a bit more. But we can, if you, if you wish, and if we wish, get a million dollars from that. That's our funds. Somebody says, well, somebody contributed towards you. That's true. But it becomes our funds that we can use to help ourselves. So I'm really pleased about that. Those are some of the things that people tend to ignore, when in fact those are extremely important things for us as a nation. In his statement, Premier Talangi said there must be an understanding that Niue should ultimately rely on itself if there is to be a positive change. We're trying to retain a population of Niueans here. It's cheaper for me if you wish, and us, to pay our people slightly more than bringing expatriates. 
that's fact of life. It, that's 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 factual. It's not it's not there. You get an expatriate four hundred thousand dollars, cheaper for us to increase whatever and technical people and teachers and, and, and so on. Not even to that amount, but at least to a substantial portion more than what they're getting in the prison moment. So to retain our population means of the number one resource that we have, we've got to look after that. If we don't have that, then we've got to look overseas to try to get some people to come here. At the present moment, my view is that the people that we're getting are too expensive. Then they're not necessarily may have the qualities that we want. So therefore, we've got to look for value for value for money that we invest in these people when they come here. So we may necessarily look at the region and look at Asia to see whether we can get the same quality um, people to do the job at much less cost. But our first and most important priority, as far as I'm concerned, is to try to retain people here, even if it means we pay them slightly more than what we've been paying them. The budget will be re presented again to the House in a couple of weeks for the second and third reading. Great news for one young athlete from Niue who attended the Oceania Athletics meet in Samoa this week as Niue got its first medal in a field event. 15-year young Janam Hopoto won bronze medal for a discus throw of 38.97 metres to grab third place in a field of hold hands in the sport. Janam will also represent Niue at the Commonwealth Youth Games in the Isle of Man in September. Another young man who has done the island proud is Misunia Misikia, who qualified for the final of the 200 metres with 24.70 seconds. Unfortunately, he will miss the event as the team will head off to catch the Niue flight today. One of Niue's best hope, Michael Jackson Jr., was unfortunately unable to compete in this week's competition because of a hamstring problem. We wish him a speedy recovery. As for the rest of the team, Suitulanga Tupuliu recorded 12.1 seconds in his 100 meter race, with Missinia Misikia recording 12.10 and Joshua Filetti 12.12. The rest of the results are yet to receive. Alpha Motama has also yet to receive his results for the competition when this report went to year. The young team will return to the island tomorrow. This morning, elderly folks. 75 years and over around the island got well-deserved attention as they gather at the annual event host specifically by NEVAT to recognize the efforts contributed to the development of the island in previous years. More pleasing for the elderly is New Zealand High Commissioner's reflection that they be called honest citizens rather than the elderly and for the consideration of all to reflect on the evidence of the honest citizens' contributions to Niue. His Excellency Mark Blumsky also thanked the organising committee for allowing New Zealand to sponsor the important event. Minister for Community Affairs Honourable John William said in her address of the honest citizens that the importance of support from all sectors is imperative to the well-being of those who have paved the way for the present generation. The organisers NEVAT was also supportive of the statements from officials and wish to encourage the continuous support for the honest citizens. The theme for today is uh, focused on healthy ageing so the honoured citizens can grow old gracefully and also healthy. One of the Tupuna last year, uh, he wrote in his story that um, when he was told to leave school at 16 years of age, he was crying. He was in tears um, because he had to leave school because there was no other, there were no high school in those days. So if we look back and we value those um, teachings from the oldies and see how fortunate we are today, we are just truly blessed um, to have that uh, opportunity available to us. And um, I hope the, the young, the youth uh, of New York High School will uh, remember today and also learn from um, the Mama Tours and our Tupunas. Another different approach for the event this year is the invitation to the Year 9 students at New High School to join the event in support of this year's Honor Citizens. Mrs. Burfa Tonga said this is an important gesture. 
uh, the time has come for us to, to recognize who they are, what they, uh, what they had contributed to this country because we, they seem to be a neglected group. But I'm glad that uh, the, the New Zealand High Commissioner and his office had contributed. They were the major sponsor for today. And they had contributed a lot. And also uh, the High Commissioner mentioned that they, they don't use old or elderly anymore. They should be called our honoured citizens. So I believe that the community should, should be in full support. And uh, also the Department of Community Affairs, I believe they are also uh, running some programs for the, for the honoured citizens of our country. And I think that should be supported. So it's good that the government is looking into recognising uh, the old folks so they won't be a neglected group in this country. The successful event ended with more games and activities for the honoured citizen. NEVAT extend their gratitude to the New Zealand High Commission Niwe Rentals and Niwe Government as well as friends and families for the sponsorship and continued support of the day for our honest citizens. And to end our news bulletin for tonight, Niwe's mixed touch rugby team has joined 27 countries around the world in this week's Touch World Cup 2011 in Edinburgh, Scotland. Impressive for a small nation who joins Australia, England, Switzerland and Catalonia in the Pool B for the first round of the World Tournament that started a few days ago. Niwe played three games, winning two and losing one in the first round. First game between Niwe and Switzerland, with Niwe winning 13 points to three. Second round against Catalonia, with Niwe again repeating its winning form, claiming the same amount of points, 13 to three. Niwe met Australia in their pool, but was defeated, 10 points to four. However, Niwe recovered to take on giant England, equalising 3 all before defeating United States, 12 points to 4. The next game is against Scotland. We wish them all the best. And that is our news bulletin for tonight. But don't forget the start of the Niwe High School Sports Day will start tomorrow at 12.30. You're all invited. And that's our news bulletin for tonight. Good evening.